when uh, uh, when we talk about pointers, <clears throat> it's all about addresses and stuff. We have to understand first what is an address. To understand what is an address, we have to understand what how how the memory is. The memory of computer is the memory of computer is is essentially an array of characters, a straight array of characters. What is a character? It's a single byte, right? It's just an array of characters, and the address is the sequence number of each byte in the memory. So the address of each byte starts from 0. The sequence number starts from 0 in RAM and goes up to the amount of money that you can pay and buy RAM, OK? So if you have 16 gigs, it goes up to 16 gigabytes. If it's, I don't know, 4 gigs, it go up to four, goes up to 4 gigs. So that's the address. How far does it go? <clears throat> this demonstration shows somewhere halfway through the memory. The address over there is 23,423,100 <laughs> byte in memory. <laughs> all right? And uh, it keeps going to whatever. All right? And then I'll just, just put in the last three digits so we can talk about it. When you uh, write a program, essentially you are leasing a piece of memory from operating system for your program to work. You're renting it out. Okay, and each mem variable that you create essentially uh, is put someplace in memory. So when you say int var, a piece of memory four bytes is uh, set aside for you, it's called, it calls it var and gives it to you. When you say double d var, it puts eight bytes somewhere else in memory that is free. Every single time it's in a different place. Every time you execute, it's going to go somewhere else, wherever it's free. So, and it's somewhere in memory. So what is the address of var here? One hundred and eight, because it starts from one hundred eighth memory byte in RAM. Okay, it's not one hundred eight; it's actually twenty three million four hundred twenty three thousand one hundred eighth memory. Okay, uh, the uh, eighth byte in memory. So that's what it is. And what is the address of DVAR now? One thirty two. Why were you thinking? Like, it's, it's trying, it's a, it's a rectangle, it starts from 132 for heaven's sake. Okay, are we okay, 132? Or should I go back and explain again? Are we okay? So anytime you actually create a variable, that happens. Okay? Now, <clears throat> whenever you are dealing with a variable, actually you, you have two ways of dealing with, with it. One way would be to use its name. It's like, you know me, you know who I am. I'm going to say, tomorrow we're going to have barbecue. Come to my place. We're going to, have, we're going to do some barbecue. Fine. But then you want to bring your friend. Your friend has no idea who I am, right? So what are you going to say? Go to this address. You give the address to the person, and the person comes to my place, and we're going to have barbecue, right? So there are two ways to access a piece of memory. One, the name. Second, the address. So the name, we know how to use it. When you actually initialize, initialize and you put the name, the name is actually the handle of your variable. You put values in it, you extract values out of it, and you, do, you know how to deal with the variable. But how to deal with an address, we, uh, how to deal with a variable's address needs a place to put the address in. When we are dealing with addresses and stuff like that, in an envelope, you put an address, right? You write an address, and then the address indicates where the envelope's going to go. Correct? That's what we have over here. So <clears throat> what type of value is an address? What type of value is an address? What type of a number is an address? It is an integer. It's not a float. I cannot have a two and a half byte. That doesn't make sense, right? Can it be negative? Can I have minus third table? No. 
when you're counting something, it starts from zero and goes up to positive numbers. So the address is actually a positive integer number. So it's simply an integer number. Don't give it an extra credit, OK? An address is just a positive integer number. But because it acts a little weird, what we need to do, we need to have a special type for it. We're going to call that address pointer, PTR. So PTR, as you see, anybody colorblind here? OK. Uh, the, the green one over there is exactly like the red one, var, that we have. They are both variables. One is called PTR, the other one is called var. Var's job is to hold an integer. That integer can be a negative or a positive value. That PTR is a variable whose job is to hold an address. So it can only be a positive value and nothing but. Are we OK with this? So to actually put some value in PTR, I have to say PTR is set to address of variable. Having this statement extracts the, va the address of the variable, which is in this case is 108, and puts it inside PTR. So PTR will hold 108 in it. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? Now, when I do something like this, I have two ways to access that var now. I have its name. I can put 32 in it using the name. Or I can go to target of PTR and say, go to the target of PTR and put the 55 in there. So what happens? It goes to PTR, sees what is the address, travels to that address, puts the value over there. Right? And that's how you can set a variable using target of a pointer. So you can say target of the pointer is 2,345, and that puts the value over there. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? If there is any part that you think it doesn't make sense, stop me, and I'm going to go back. Yeah, go. I'm going to go back. <laughs> so from how, how back? Right from the beginning? Oh, OK. So what I'm saying is that to access a variable, I, ha I have two choices. Either use the variable name or use its address. To use its address, I have to extract its address and put it somewhere. This is just my imagination. There is no such thing in C language. OK? So I would assume there is a type called access pointer, or address pointer, and I'll call that a PTR. Then I extract the address of a variable and put it in PTR. That action extracts where the variable is, that is 108, and puts it right into the PTR. So PTR now holds the address of var. Whoever tells me, go to the target of PTR and put something in it, I'm going to see what's in PTR, go to that address, put the value right in there. OK? That's essentially what pointers are. Pointers are variables that point to other things. That's all. OK? So using this, if I actually print the variable afterwards, what's going to get printed? 2, 3, 4, 5. Correct? Now, what if I print the target of PTR? What's going to get printed? 2, 3, 4, 5. It's still 2, 3, 4, 5, the same thing. What if I print the PTR itself? 108, right? Why? Why did I put percent %u over here? If you recall from the beginning of the semester, percent %u was, a, was for an unsigned integer, an integer that did not have negative values. So if I actually print the PTR itself, I will see exactly where my variable is located at. Are we, are we OK with this? That is it, finished. That's what pointers are and nothing else. There is no uh, hidden agenda behind it. But there are just little things that I have to clarify. Let's say we want to do the same thing with uh, the double pointer, uh, with the, with, sorry, with the double variable. If I want to do that, essentially with the logic that I mentioned, I should say PTR holds the address of the dvar, right? And doing so, 132 goes into the PTR, correct? And then, if I do this, 
the value that I'm putting into target of PDR should go into the double one, right? Now, if I gave you an address, let's say you are driving an Uber, and I'll give you an address. Can you have any idea what is a target of that address? If I tell you 932 Young Street, do you know if it's a government building or it's a convenience store? Look at the number in PTR, 132. How is that different with 108? How could possibly C language know what is the size of the thing that is sitting at the target? How could it know that it has to overwrite eight bytes with that variable and not four? And not one. What if it's an address of a character? The addresses are all the same. They're all same values, right? So this thing cannot work. The imaginary variable I created for address of a pointer, uh, for, an, for an address pointer doesn't work. Why it doesn't work? This pointer needs to know what's sitting at the target. That pointer needs to know that what's sitting at the target is an integer, or a variable, or a, or a double, or a character, or a student, or an employee, a car. No one knows. Because of that, I should modify my, my creation over here. What I need to do is to mention PTR is an integer pointer. It's specifically designed to hold the address of an integer. Therefore, when I actually put the address of the integer in there and then set the target 2345, it knows what is at the target, what has to be overwritten. If I did that with the double, if I now put the address of the double in PTR, compiler is going to get me. What are you doing? This is the address of an integer you are putting an address of a double into. That's not going to work. So with pointers, some, the, the difference between a regular integer and an integer pointer is that an integer is just a number, an integer number. An integer pointer, however, is a positive integer number whose target is, is specified. You know what is sitting at the target because you are mentioning what type of a pointer it is. Integer pointer PTR, double pointer PTR, struct student pointer PTR, struct employee pointer PTR, whatever. We don't care what. So now if we continue, we can do all the things we wanted to do with no problem. And it's going to work perfectly exactly how it's, how it's supposed to be. Not only that, now I can actually create a double pointer. It's going to be somewhere else. And this one cannot hold the address of an integer now. It is specifically designed to hold the address of a double, and therefore I can do all the good things that I wanted to do with the double, which is DPTR is the address of the double variable. And now the double variable goes in there and the address there with no problem. Now I can do all those things that I wanted to do with the other one with this one. I can say target of DPTR is this value, no problem. It's double, it's going to overwrite the 8 bytes in a target because it knows what's sitting at the end is 8 bytes in size. And everything is crystal clear. Are we OK with this? Yes. Yes, so the type of the variable. For example, oh, you have to extract, of course. To come to Fardad's place, you know, you need to know it's Fardad's address. Yeah, but why yeah. pointers are created then? Oh, we'll come to it soon. <laughs> Baby steps, don't rush. <laughs> well, no rush, no rush. Well, <laughs> I know, I know. Why? We have the name of the variable. You know, Fardad's there. Why you need his address? Just follow him. Yes. The answer is yes. And please be quiet. <laughs> no, it's perfectly correct. You, you can. Um, but that's called a double pointer. It's a pointer to a pointer. And you can have a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. You can have a pointer to a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. You can do all that. The definition is recursive. Because, oh, because this is a variable by itself. It is sitting in an address. What is the address? 124. This has to go somewhere, right? 
So it's going to be an integer pointer pointer DPTR, right? It's a little confusing, but if you understand the concept properly without getting confused, then you can simply expand it to whatever you want. But that was an amazing question. So are we okay with this? Can I actually write code, C code with this and see what happens? Can I? Okay. So let's code. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go actually right over here to copy the code. I don't want to type the whole thing. So it's going to make it ready over here. That's it. Now let's open Visual Studio and, and bring it in here. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, integer variable. OK, integer var, right? Then I'm going to say integer pointer PTR. Are we OK with that? Integer pointer PTR. Then I'm going to say PTR is set to address of uh, var, correct? And then I'm going to say target of, target of PTR is set to 2345. And the good things that I wanted to do with printf, I'll do it. So I'm just going to copy all the text from here. I don't want to retype it. OK, now let's walk through that and see what happens. So I'm going to walk through it. OK, so we start the variable is some garbage value, right? Integer pointer is pointing to some garbage place. You see that question mark in there? Because it's pointing to some place, because there's garbage in there, it is considered an address still, right? It's a number, right? But it's a number to someone else's memory. It's as if you go open someone's door and get in. <laughs> you know, can't do it. I'm going to chase with a baseball bat. So it's the same thing. Well, that thing's going to happen a lot to you. You're going to see your program crashes, says segmentation fault, core dumped. Whenever you see that, it means you went to someone else's address and you tried to modify it. OK? So that's that. But So what I do right after that, I'm going to say set the target of PTR to 2345. Three, now PTR points to the variable. Uh, sorry, set the PTR to address of var. We set it and then set the target to 2345. Therefore, now uh, target of two, uh, now var is actually 2345. So through the address of var, I change the target of, uh, through the address of var that it's in PTR, I change the target of PTR to 2345, and therefore var is changed to 2345. So when I print var, 2345 is printed. If I print target of PTR, again, 2345 is printed. And if I print PTR, what's printed? 108? No, we don't know. That address. So that's essentially or exactly 14,415,904th byte of memory is where the integer var is sitting in memory. OK? And remember, you see that number? Take a look. Oh, 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 oh I'm going to crash it. Stop. Yeah, thank you. All right. So let me just run it one more time. Look what is the address. You see that? Completely different address. I'll run it again. Look at that. Every single time you run it, it sits in a different address. But the results are all the same. Who cares? Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? No? OK. Which part you're not OK with? Today you go to Holiday Inn. You get a room. It's room number 108. You check out. Two months later, you go over there. Is it guaranteed you're going to be in 108 again? Ta-da. Every time you rent a room, you go to a new place, a new room, even if it's the same hotel. 
no guarantees. It's the same thing. Operating system is the hotel manager in here. Anytime you're renting a room, it gives you wherever it's possible. You can bribe them and get the ocean view room. Not in computer, though. There is no ocean over there. All right, are we OK? And that's why it always changes. Every single time, it's in a different place. OK, there we go. Do we understand the concept? I want the concept to be understood. Do we understand what it does? What it's going to do, we're going to come too soon. Are we OK? All right. Now, let's, let's give you the right, correct syntax. This is my, me faking it. OK? There is no such thing as pointer in C language or address of. You see this? Pointer lecture dot H. Define address of, define target of. I just search and replace before I do it so, you can, so it's going to be easier to digest. OK? Now, <clears throat> pointer, this pointer thingy, that address of, you know what it is. What is address of? What is address of? Ampersand. You already know, right? So let me just actually, so I'm going to say 0, 1, uh, far that faking a pointer. If I can type it, of course, dot C. OK, so that's that. Now let's write the real syntax. So let's remove that include thingy over there and see what's going to happen. So you see everything went there now <laughs> as soon as I remove that. OK, so pointer is an asterisk. So whenever you have an asterisk and I type this site, somebody go over there and shh, OK. <laughs> Whenever you see an asterisk and a type beside it, the asterisk belongs to the type. Together, they mean something pointer. Never call that an asterisk. It is an integer pointer. You will see probably the next prof that's going to come write something like this. Don't like it. That's not good. The asterisk always belongs to the integer, not, ooh, ooh, not to the pointer. OK, the asterisk belongs to the type, whatever it is. Now, if it's a double pointer, it's a double pointer. You write double pointer D or DPTR, whatever. Okay? If it's a character pointer, it's character pointer CPTR. Okay? All right? So again, asterisk, when there is a type beside it, it means pointer. Are we okay with this? Address of, you know what it is. It's an ampersand. Target of. This is the part that's going to go, woohoo! It's again asterisk. Again asterisk. I'll tell you how to recognize which is what. So this is target of PTR, and this is target of PTR. And if we run this program, the outcome is identical to the other one with no difference. Of course, the location of the variable is different. Are we OK with this? Now, ampersand is easy to understand. We talked about it. You know what it is. And that's address of. How do we recognize what the devil is that asterisk thing you're doing? OK? Let's see how to recognize what an asterisk means and what does it mean where. What is this thing that? It, the exact same thing happened in the other class for some reason. I don't know why. All right. <clears throat> Line five. Whenever you look at something and you feel life is beautiful, then nothing's wrong. OK? It makes sense. That means multiplication. A is said to be multiplied by C. Ta-da. Easy, breezy, nothing's wrong. OK? Whenever at left side of the asterisk, you keep going, 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 and you get to a type, it thinks somebody's foolish. This asterisk belongs to that. Together, they mean pointer. OK, it's a free format language. I can do this. See, I can simply do it like this and like that. And there you go, Control F5, 
works perfectly. Okay? But that's just stupid. I don't want to do that. Okay? So remember, come back up, come back up, up. All right. So whenever you have an asterisk, and at left side of asterisk, no matter how far, there is a type, together they mean pointer. Now that could be an integer pointer. It could be student pointer. It could be a double pointer. It could be a struct, I don't know, car pointer. OK? So no matter what is, if you see an asterisk type beside it, it means together they mean pointer. It's a pointer type. Finally. Whenever you look at the asterisk and you say, what the heck is going on? That's target of. OK? So A is set to B. That's the first one. Multiply by, huh? That means target of. OK? So A <laughs> is set to B multiplied by target of C. That means C is not a normal variable. C is a pointer. OK? That's the rule for it. Now let's make it a little more interesting. X is set to, huh? That means target of. X is set to target of Y multiplied by target of Z. It means Y and Z, they are both pointers. OK? But again, somebody writes like that, there is something wrong in their brain. Because you always have to write it in a way that everybody understands what belongs to what. Stick it to that one it belongs to. Now we know. A is B multiplied by target of C. X is target of Y multiplied by target of Z. Yes. Y in brackets. Around it? No. C programmers hate to type too much. That's why it's such a weird language. You know, like lots of languages, instead of open curly bracket, they have begin. And instead of end, close curly bracket, they have end. But they want to just be fast. They made it one. That's why it's like that. Yes. One more time. No, no, no. Say it in English. Target of. Did I say address of? It means whatever it's pointing to. You don't know what is it pointing to. Whatever address of anything that points to, that thing is being multiplied. Target of. Say it right. If you say it right, it makes sense. As soon as you look at it as an asterisk, you're going to go bananas. OK? When you look at it, say, target of y. So y is a pointer. It's been set. The address is being set. It's holding the address of something. Let me go see what it is. Whatever it is, that is being multiplied. Are we OK with this? OK? We're going to come to your question soon. She looks like, whoa, whoa, so what the heck? I mean, like, so what? You're just. It's not that only, only that, I, that, that I hate the students and they want to suffer. They actually, it actually has some good points, too, we're going to come to. So we understand how it works, right? Now I want to put some, write some code that show what side effects of pointers we can use to our advantage, OK? So. This is zero two real syntax of pointers, exactly. All right, so A multiplied by, no, B multiplied by C. integer pointer PTR struct student 
pointer SPTR, and so on and so forth. This one is A set to B multiply multiply by uh, target of C and X set to target of Y multiply by target of Z for future reference if you want to ever review this. All right. <clears throat> Void set to zero. Integer num, and I'm going to say num set to zero. Set to zero var. And assuming there is two, three, four, five. What is the output of the following program? What's going to get printed? Two, three, four, five. Because nothing's happening. I am I have var two, three, four, five. Then a copy of the content of var goes into num. Num becomes Two, three, four, five. Num becomes zero. It lives life ends. Num dies. Comes back over here. Var remains what it was. Right? Bad set to zero. Now let's write a set to zero. And in here, I'm going to pass an integer pointer p. And then I will say target of p is set to zero. Now I'm going to say set to zero address of var. Now, what is the output? of line number 15. When you walk through it, in here, set to zero, var is not sent. A copy of var is not sent to set to zero. A copy of its address is sent over there, right? So p will hold the address of var, correct? Now in here it says target of p. What is target of p? Var. Set it to zero. Var becomes zero and it comes out. So if, if I look at the outcome of the second thing over here, you will see that the second one actually becomes zero. That is why you pass an ampersand to a scanf, not just a regular thing. That is why you pass the address of variables to scanf. Scanf needs to set the variables. That's why it needs its address. A printf doesn't need an address because you just want to print the value. It gets a copy. Do we understand now? That's one of the good things about pointers, which means you can manipulate variables in places the variable is not visible. In this function, set to zero has no idea what var is, but it knows address of something is in here. It sets it. Are we OK with this? OK. Now, you can do this with anything you want, any type of, uh, any type of let me open it. You can do this with any type of type. We did it with integer. We can do it with a, with a structure if you want to. Now, 
Say I want to, say I want to read a structure, set a structure to a value. What did I do? Remember, I was returning a structure, correct? Let's say I want to, um, pointer usage. Let's say I have a structure for a student. We dealt with this before, right? If I want to write a function that receives this from user, call it set student mark. What do I have to do in that function? I have to create a, stru a, a student inside that function. Then I have to get the value and return it back. You know how much that data is going to get passed? This is 52 bytes of data. I have to create 52 bytes of data inside the function, set them to values, and then return the 52 bytes out. So 100 bytes of data transfer just to do one setting. Now what I can do, the smart way of doing it, is to actually create a function that receives the address of a student mark. What is the size of an address? How big is an address? You saw it over here. Four bytes. No matter what is the target. The envelope is an envelope. If you send an envelope to a government building, it's the same address to send it to a, I don't know, small house. The size of the address is always the same. It's the targets that, it's, that is different. So I can only pass four bytes to this thing and make the structure accessible, the one that is outside to this one. So how do I do it? I write the function. As for the student entry, then I'm going to say enter the mark. I have the utilities over here, so I, I have the foolproof get int thing. I'm not going to do scanf. It's easier like this. Now, if I want to access the structure using the PTR, what do I have to say? I have to say target of PTR, right? Then I have to put dot mark, correct? But the problem is that dot is much more powerful. Dot is much more powerful than asterisk. To your question, can I put braces around it? All right? Because this is so powerful, this happens first. And that doesn't make sense because PTR is not a structure, it's a pointer, right? To force it to go to target of PTR, you have to do this. So you have to say target of PTR, find it. That's the structure. Now set its mark to the integer that I want to. Right? So it gets the student and put it over there. But as I mentioned, C, C programmers hate to type. So they made it easier. They said, OK, because structure is difficult and you have to put parentheses around it and stuff like that, we create you, we make you an easier type of operator. Whenever you have a structure, pointer, and you want to get to the details of what that pointer is pointing to, simply write an arrow. That means the same. Now I can say student number. And I can actually receive a student number with the exact same function that I had to get valid thingy and put it right in there. Now I want to get the name. It's time to learn something new. I'm going to get the name, so I want to make sure that if they enter something bad, I, I, need, uh, I can validate it, uh, foolproof it. So I'm going to create a new line character over there. And I'm going to say scanf. Percent, percent %s, percent %c. And then in here, I'm going to say PTR name. We know that that's how we get a string. And uh, 
Uh, the new line should go over here. Address of new line. To, get an, to, to make sure that they ended it with new line, but there is a problem. Percent %s does not accept spaces. If you type for that space solely manual, it picks for that, and the rest will be garbage. It's, it's not going to get it. It's going to go, I want, I want to tell to print to scanf to read up to backslash n, not to space. There is a, there's an app for that. There is a, there is a, uh, uh, a way to do that. You can actually tell to, to scanf to go, this means up to. This carrot thingy means up to, backslash n. So you're saying reading the string, read the string up to backslash n and then stop. Not only that, you can actually tell it, read it up to 40 characters or backslash n, whichever comes first. So they don't go over 40 characters that we have for the thing. But the catch is that if they, if they, if they pass 40 characters, then the rest will remain in keyboard, right? If that's the case, then new line is not going to be new line. So to fix that problem, we know what, to, what we do. We just flush the keyboard, right? So I'm going to say, if the new line is not new line, flush the keyboard. And voila, I have a set mark that receives it. The difference between this set mark and a bad set mark is that if I actually, if I actually wanted to have a structured student here and return it, I had to return 52 bytes of characters. In here, I only receive four and accomplish the same thing. If I want to print a student name, the bad way of doing it is this. Pass a student mark as an as a argument list and print it out. You know this, right? The problem is that, again, 52 marks has to get coffee, 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 I need a coffee, copied in here and get printed. But we can pass the address. It doesn't have to be for modifying. I want to make the thing accessible. If I want to make the thing accessible, who says that I can't pass an address for it? I can just simply pass the address and do the printing. Only four bytes. Not the whole thing. I'm just going to tell to the function where the student is. Go pick it up. I'm not going to send the whole thing to you. One problem with this, we tend to shoot ourselves in the foot when we have stuff like this. The job of student printing student is just to print, right? Not to modify the, the pointer, correct? Not to modify the student. But when you give the address, it's like you're giving the key to someone. You have to make sure that by mistake they don't change this. They means you, okay? How do you fix that? In a test you did that. How do you make something read only? Const. const. You can simply put a const beside it, which means anything this pointer is pointing to is read only. You cannot modify it. Now, if by mistake in my code I write somewhere ptr mark, set to zero, let's say, immediately it's going to tell me what? Expression must be a modifiable value. You cannot overwrite, write over a constant thing, which is very, very good. Now we can write a small main over here and see how nice pointers make things work. That becomes the main. I simply have a student, a student mark set the student mark, pass the address, and print it out. Three lines of code. And does everything perfectly. It's all foolproof, nicely done, and gets, gives me error. On the finest thing, yada, 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 what is that? Oh, I didn't delete the other one. Oopsie. Sorry, I have two mains. Mm. I think it's good now. There we go. Now, because I'm reusing my code, if I enter garbage, it's, it's going to actually prevent it. Now I can actually enter the value. Oh, did I, did I, I didn't put the thing for the other one. 
Uh, I didn't mention what I want to get. Mark, where is it? Oh, I forgot to mention actually enter. Enter student number. Sorry, print out. <laughs> enter. Oh, student number. Student number. And forgot the prompt. Bad boy I am. And printf name. Quickly, quickly for that. We are four minutes overdue. I know that, but sorry about that. Now it's going to work out. So I don't know, 78, student number, whatever. And name, far dude, whatever. It accepts them all, and it's going to print it perfectly. Are we OK with this? All right. That's all. So that's the pointers that we need to know. The next time you're coming in, you have, a t you have a quiz on pointers. And after that, I'm going to talk about relation between pointers and arrays and how nicely they can interact, OK? And then have a beautiful rest of your life. I'm gone. <laughs>